Welcome back to Fit for Life with Karen. Today we are gathering strength, not for a storm. We're gathering strength by doing strengthening exercises. As we get older, uh, that kind of wanes a little bit, but we want to replace it and make it even better, better than it ever was, possibly, if you're going to start a, a really good exercise program. Um, we need strength training. I know I'm repeating it, but you know, sometimes you have to repeat because we, we do forget things. We are human, right? Uh, we need strength training at least twice a week. And once we reach the plateau where we need to be, um, you know, we still need to do it twice a week. Um, if you're just starting out, three times a week is okay, but you need a couple of days in between. Uh, you don't want to do strength training with the same muscles every single day. So we'll keep that in mind. Um, weights, bands, balls, bells, health clubs, yoga, all of those contribute to a stronger body. There's lots of things out there. We're going to be using what we call dumbbells or free weights. I don't like that word dumbbell at all. Um, why do we do it? It's kind of boring sometimes and uh, maybe not always that comfortable. Do you want to stay independent or do you want people to have to do everything for you, even lift you out of a chair? Sometimes we can't help that. And thank God we have our friends, right? We're really lucky there. But um, you want to be able to do things for yourself. So keep that in mind. And I think this will give you at least the intention of doing strength training. Uh, you will look and feel better. Your muscles will be tighter. Uh, you'll be losing weight. Your posture will be better. Your energy will be better too. So that's all that stuff is really terrific. Um, you want to play with your grandkids. You want to be able to do a few things with them. Maybe badminton, um, taking long walks, a little bit of swimming, uh, pickleball for us. We love pickleball. Uh, you're burning calories. We tend not to do that as we get older. And what happens? We get heavier. We don't feel as comfortable, do we? Don't look the way we want to look. Uh, and you're delaying your time of disability. And that's all I'm going to say about that. So what we're going to do is stand up and do a little bit of a warm up. So let's practice our strength training again. Come forward in your chair and we'll just get right up. Okay. Um, a little bit of aerobics just to get the heart rate up. Warm your muscles up a little bit. Uh, you can do it behind a chair if you want. You can do it over here. I won't do it in front of the chair right now because I'm always in the wrong place. So we're just running in place or marching in place. Sometimes we can't put pressure here. So you could march in place, arms out. You look like you're really doing something great, right? Or kick, a little bit of a kick. If you're listening to music at the time, just go with the music, anything at all, anything you want to do. Five and six, and I love to dance, and I know you do too. Forward and back, as if you're walking, you're walking forward, and this is great for falls prevention too just to get the heart rate up a little bit. Let's try the other foot though, so it's forward and back. Nice and tall, you're happy, you're thankful you can even do this for yourself, because it is for you and, and your family, your loved ones and friends, and you want to be able to do things with people. All right, um, let's do, just to relax a little bit, some knee bends. One, did you hear that crack? That was my knee. Four, you can do this, you can do whatever you want with your arms, I don't care. But the knee bends are important. Again, some of us don't have terrific knees. They either hurt, they might crack a little. It's called crepitus. It usually isn't dangerous, so just keep that in mind. Always check with your doctor when you're starting an exercise program also. All right, now let's just reach across, reaching up to. So this would be called dynamic stretching, wouldn't it? Across because we're moving. If we do that and hold it, it's static. We did that in the last show, didn't we? Reaching across. Do you feel warmer? I do. I can feel it. So reaching across or reaching to the side and the side, good. And reach and four and five and six and seven and eight, let's reach down, and one, and two, 
and three. How's your balance? Four and five and six and seven and eight. Open those feet again. Let's do our lunges. I know we did them before, but I don't think you can do enough of these. Back and forth. Use your arms if you want. And then I will give you one of my favorite warm-ups, uh, stretches, and it's a dynamic stretch. And all you do is lift those arms up, bend your knees, keep your head up, and just lift your arms to the back. So it's up. Two and three and four and five. Burning those calories, strengthening those muscles. Good. Good for your brain, too. Gets the blood up to the brain when you move. So keep that in mind. Uh, have a seat. I'm going to sit down without holding on today. Grab your water, always have your water with you. Uh, you can drink some before exercise, take a little break during exercise and afterwards, of course. Cheers, folks. Terrific. Honestly, I do feel better since I've been drinking more water. Try to remember that. It's really important. So I'm taking my weights. Again, we're working on the upper body. We're going to do some very basic uh, movements today, or exercises, or lifts, or whatever you want to call them, uh, because we did uh, a little bit of a warm-up. That takes a few minutes. So let's lift the weights, elbows into your body. Your arms are straight out from the elbow. And if I said do a bicep curl, what would you do? You just bring it up, that's all. Slowly down, you're actually tightening that abdomen too, which is good. So pay attention, feel that. Breathing out. But slower down, remember, to the count of four. Good. Again, all the way up. So this is three. And four. Slowly down. And five. Unless you're just starting, we do two sets, but we're just going to do one set just because of the time. And let's go up again, but slowly down. Let's say this is seven. I'm not sure. Up and one, two, three. And then we'll do eight all the way up and one and two and three and four. And just put them right down here in your lap. Now, for those that have been doing strength training, whether on machines or with yoga, uh, when you have done the second set, if, if you're up to that point, try two weights in one hand. We're not going to spend a lot of time on this, uh, but just see if you can manage it pretty well. Uh, now, you're not used to it. I mean, if it hurts, of course you're not going to do it, but if you can do a few of these, with one hand or a set of eight or ten, whatever you can do, probably ready for a uh, heavier weight. So keep that in mind. Try the other side. There will be one side that's weaker or stronger. Elbow in. And I kind of cross them a little bit rather than side by side. We're crossing. Bring it up and slowly down. How's that? Make sure that elbow is supported by your, your body. Up. And slowly down, try it again. Up, great, and slowly up again. So what you're doing is you're doubling the weight, so that's, that's a good thing. Let's rest just for a minute. Drop your chin right down. Oh boy, that feels so good. And then we'll just bring the head up. Push your chin up toward the ceiling. Let's get a nice stretch in that neck, and you know what I'm talking about. All right. And let's turn to one side, it doesn't matter which. And then to the other side. So we're just relaxing a little bit. Let's come back to the eardrop for the side of your neck. All of these can be held longer. Oh, I think I heard something in there this time. And then we're going to bring the head right back up again. So that feels pretty good, doesn't it? All right, let's do some flies. 
Uh, this would be for your shoulders and your upper back and your arms. You're holding on to the weights, so they are together. You're going to breathe out. And how many seconds back? Four. You're tightening the abdomen. Yes, you are. And one, two, three, four. It's easier when someone does it with you, right? Breathing out and slowly back. Again. And one, two, three, and four. Let's try for five. All the way out and slowly back. They want to meet each other, so that's what you're doing. Out. Four seconds again. Let's say this is six. Breathing out again. All right. Can you feel it? You're getting a little tired. You should be a little tired. Uh, when it gets to a point where, where it's not, where you're not tired anymore and you're, you're going slowly, again, that might be an indication you need a heavier weight. So keep that in mind. Um, and you're opening up the chest, which is good too. So you, we do so much rounding, you want to open it all up good. And then bring it back and down. Oh, we're really going to rest now, aren't we? Whew. So lift it up. The other side up. Forward forward. How about back? To go back, I, my hand kind of comes up a little bit, just a little. Try the other side back. Back. I know you can feel that, so let's try, uh, let's try it in sequence. Forward, up, back, and down. The other side, forward, up, back, and down. Now both up. One, let's do four, two, and three and four. All right, let's do a few more of these. So you're breathing out and slowly back. Try one more, breathing out. So this is for the upper body mostly, isn't it? And we'll bring those weights back and just bring them down. <sighs> Drop your chin right down. I like doing this. It feels good. And we do hold a lot of tension and tightness in the neck. But you know what? Let's bring that head back up. While we're here, let's strengthen the neck a little bit, okay? The neck has to hold our head up, but that's a big job. Um, just take your fingers and touch the back of your neck or clasp your hands back there. I'm going to do that. Sitting up straight, just want you to push your head back into your hands. If this is uncomfortable or it just doesn't feel good at all, I don't want you to do it, okay? But just kind of Pull your head back into your hands. Now, if you're just touching your neck, it doesn't work quite as well. You really want to, you know, get your hands on your neck there. Okay, one more time, and we'll pull back, and that will strengthen your neck, your neck just a little bit. Good. Um, another exercise that's really good for the upper body, and probably it's good for most of the upper body, is the paddle wheel. So we'll hold one weight above the other and just do one. And I know you're going to feel this one, too. And if you can only do four, that's OK. At least you're doing something, right? We'll say five on the next one. And six all over the upper body. And seven, and one more, and eight. Now, I think that's a really ambitious one, don't you? Let's do a few of these back and forth. If it makes you dizzy, don't do it. Stay here. Now, if you can, just drop down slowly. Let your head drop down and go over to the other side. Try it again, dropping down and over to the other side. And that's all we're going to do on that one. All right. Um, let's do this. Let's put our weights down. We're going to work on the lower body now. We want to make sure we have enough time for that because we need it to be ambulatory, to be able to get around ourselves. We're going to come forward. Wonderful. Uh, we're gonna, the first two exercises we will do with the chair, and then we'll be standing up. So you know the old sit-stand, just standing up without holding on, if you can. If not, and you need a little help, hands right here and push. Push down into those legs. Wonderful. 
Let's go back down again. If you can do eight of those, each in a different, depends on which way you're going to do it. And then arms out straight and try it. There's three. Let's try four here. Good. Can you do five? Whatever you can do is great. And the more you do it, the more you'll be able to do. The stronger you'll get, the less you'll need, you will need help. And that's important. Let's just stay here. That's enough of that. Um, another exercise, seated for the lower body. Kind of easy, technically. Legs straight out, right straight out from the hip. You can flex that foot back a little towards your body. And you can hold on if you want. Or you can sit up straight and do it. It's a little bit more difficult. But if you want to hold on, let's just do some leg bounces. Two and three and four and five and six and seven. I'm working you hard today. Let's do double. 10, 11, 12. I can feel it. And 14 and 15 and 16. But you did it, didn't you? That's great. The other leg out straight. Flex the foot. I'm going to try it away from the chair. If you want, you could put your arms here or here and bounce it. One little bounce is two, so you're strengthening three. Put your hand here. You can feel that it gets hard. And four and five and six and seven. I'm going to hold on. Eight, nine, and ten. Eleven. Go at your own speed. And 13, 14, 15. There you go. Pretty good. Feels good? All right. Let's come forward just for a minute to relax. Open those feet up and we'll come forward. You can grab your ankles if you want. You can bring your feet back a little bit. Keep your head up. Feel that nice stretch in your lower back. Wonderful. Let's sit back up before we stand up. And all I want you to do is lean and touch the floor if you can to the other side. It's just a little stretch. It's no big deal, but I think it feels good. Um, make a fist this time and see if you can still touch. Just trying is an exercise, and the more you do it, the closer you come to be a being able to do it. All right, and back. So all we're doing now is just stretching before we stand up. Wonderful. Okay. Coming forward in the chair. If you need to grab some water, do it now. All right. Good. Arms out and just stand up. Now you'll notice it'll be a little bit easier now that you've been working. Just march in place just to loosen up a little bit. Just do whatever you want just to loosen up. Okay. Let's do some arm lifts and then back and up and down. Now, one of the most important exercises that seniors can do to strengthen the lower body and be able to stay independent is the squat. Not the prettiest one. Uh, it can be difficult, especially if you're doing it correctly. Uh, we're going to do it as correctly as possible. And all we're going to start with is just bringing those arms out. Okay? Now, you're going to bend your knees as much as you can. All right. Push this back as if you're going to sit down. If you are nervous about falling, do this in front of a chair, standing in front of the chair, just in case you lost your balance and you could go back. So whatever you can do, you will do. All right. Again, arms out straight from the shoulders. We're going to bend those knees. Just doing this will strengthen these, just this. Push back and reach at the same time. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. If you could do some of those at least every other day, um, maybe work up to ten, eight or ten, uh, even one or two is good. Whatever you can do. So just keep that in mind. We're going to do one more, and it's called the squat. Arms straight out. I know you can do this part. This part's pretty darn easy, isn't it? And then push back as if you're going to sit down and reach forward at the same time. And reach, and reach, 
and reach. And you'll be able to go down a little bit further each time too, which is good. Uh, I'm gonna move back to the chair, put one foot in front. I'd like you to hold on to the chair this time, whether you're behind it or to the side and just go back. If you want, you can use your arm and be dramatic. It's funny. Out to the side, bring it across, isn't that lovely? And then bring it out to the side. Okay, now, I would like you to get behind your chair, unless you're there already. I will turn my chair. We are going to strengthen the hamstrings now. We, we worked a lot for the, with the quadriceps. Now we're going to strengthen the hamstrings. And this is kind of easy stuff. All right, all you're going to do is tap the toe. Just put your toe back here. Now watch your posture. Try to bring yourself up as much as you can, all right? And you're just going to tap one. Good for the glutes, two and three and four and five and six. I know you can feel it here. Seven and eight. Can you do ten? Nine. You're just tapping that toe. All right. Both feet are flat and you're just going to relax. Now, if we were doing it, if we had more time, you would do another set of that. Um, and then just to relax the leg a little. Now, the same leg, I just want you to kick. One, kick to the back. And two, doesn't that feel good? And three, getting a little stretch here. And four, and five, and six. Easy as pie, right? Seven and eight. All right, now the other, we just did one leg, so we have to do the other leg. Whichever one you didn't do before, you're going to just tap the toe. One, and two, and three and four, and five, and six, and seven, and eight, and nine, and ten. Both feet flat on the floor. A little bit of a, a knee bend here. Uh, just to relax the leg a little bit. And you're just going to kick back one. This one is quite easy. And three, and four, and five. Now we've been working mostly on the upper leg. Uh, we're going to work from the knee down, and this especially is good for balance work to keep that foot and the ankle and the calf muscle strong, right? Uh, especially we want to strengthen the ankle. So here's what we're going to do, and we've done it many times before, uh, holding onto the chair or not, or with just one hand, and just lift one and two and three, I mean technically what could be easier than this, and four, and five, and six, and seven, I'm going to let go with one hand, eight, and nine, and ten, up, 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 put those heels down, now relax just a little bit, wonderful. Now, most people have a weaker or a stronger leg, right? If, if one is weak, the other one has to be strong. So let's stand on the weaker leg and try to do a set of eight on just the one leg. So you have to lift the other one up. So this is my weaker leg, and hopefully this will balance your strength so you're less apt to fall. It's, it's simple. Um, I've seen it in many books. Uh, that deal with balance work. Let's say this is five and six. I know you can feel it. And seven. Let's just do eight. Good. Shake that out a little bit. Now the same leg that we were standing on, I'd like you to put in the back. Just touch with your toe. Ball of the foot comes down, then your heel. You should feel a stretch now, right there in your calf muscle. If you don't, you have to go further back, and you're holding on so you shouldn't have any trouble with this. So we're stretching out that calf muscle. Can you feel it? E, I can feel it. Push yourself up, nice and tall. See if you can balance there, just for the heck of it. Good. Let's try the other side, though. We have to stretch the other side. Toe, ball of the foot, pull the heel down, and now you'll be stretching the other calf muscle. See? We are done. So let's sit down, grab some water, and all we're going to do is a little stretching, especially for the lower body. It won't take long.
You'll be glad you did it. I should sit down without holding on, too, if I can. There we go. Good. All right. I'll grab some water, too. We are almost finished. You did a great job. Now, uh, in the next couple of shows, we'll do strength training with bands. So I think you're going to enjoy that. So let's just slide forward now. Um, this is a very important stretch, one that I do in bed every morning before I get up. Just lift that leg right up. Hold underneath and pull in. Feel that in your lower back and in your hamstring. Yes. And you can come forward if you want. Oh, that feels so good. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Now sit up straight if you can and pull it in again. Wonderful. If you could hold a stretch for 30 seconds, that would be ideal. You just do less, actually, but longer, right? Let's try the other side. Stretching the hamstring, pulling that leg right up. Drop that chin forward. Good. Just stay there as long as you can. And you can bring your head back up again. That's terrific. Great. All right, now let's sit back. Legs out straight. And just move those feet around to loosen up your legs a little bit. Loosen up those muscles. Now remember, you need to do this once more during the week. Always allow, I would say safely, two days in between. You don't do strength training as I said before many times, with the same group of muscles you could do, if you're going to do it two days in a row, do your upper body one day and the next day do your lower. Uh, walking three to five times a week, the Surgeon General says we should do it. Uh, and this 10,000 steps a day, don't worry about it. Now they're saying 4,000 is plenty for most people. So thanks for joining us. I am very happy about that. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye for now. <laughs>